Greetings from Holy Trinity Claygate. It's Patrick. It was good to chat the other day. Things have changed a little bit since then. I was able to go out of my front door and outside today I can only look through the window. The church looks glorious, but uh, I'm sadly separated from the church and the people uh, that live and work and visit the church. Last week, while I was still allowed to get out and about, I was really uh, fortunate to be able to go to the parade and visit quite a few people um, who run local businesses. Some are doing an absolutely amazing job uh, providing food and uh, essential services for the local community. Um, others that I visited um, were very, very quiet and their business was shutting down and it was really difficult for them. And in these difficult situations, some were able to be reflective and weigh things up. And for some, they spoke about it giving them an opportunity to reappraise their lives and what was important. Some thought that was a good thing. Others I met were far from coming to that conclusion. Just uh, wandering around, I bumped into a waiter and he just got the news that he was being laid off. Um, he's quite vulnerable, not old, um, very, very active, but that was his livelihood and he was worried about how he's gonna pay his rent and and uh, provide food. All really um, understandable things. But the sad thing as I talked to him is he really couldn't and hadn't got the capacity to think beyond himself. And it was all about me, me, me. I'm not sure that I was able to change his mind about very much, but hopefully at the end of the conversation, he at least appeared to be a little bit more peaceful. I had to go and get my daughter uh, from London last week. And on the way back, uh, there was a really distressing scene. We pulled up at the traffic lights and there was a little frail old lady with a, a little buggy, a trolley, a shopping trolley. And she, at the lights, she just sh shuffled over the road. And um, it was really, really moving. My daughter couldn't contain herself. She just, it was the straw that broke the camel's back and she was in, in tears. And she said to me, who's gonna look after that little old lady? And I think it's a really good question. Uh, because she did look very frail. Well, one of, what I want to say to you and um, is that within Claygate, we're a very uh, loving, quite close-knit community. Certainly I can say that of the church and there's evidence way beyond the church that we're a, a community that wants to look after each other. And there should be no little old ladies or little old men or anyone who's feeling vulnerable that can't reach out in some way and the church has got its contact numbers. Uh, this morning as we shut down uh, we were getting a list of people together that weren't on the internet and were hard to contact and hopefully they'll be um, through our postman, hopefully there'll be a letter going through every single door of the people that we're aware of about who they're going to contact if they're in any sort of need. Today as a family um, we're in, in self-isolation and we join the rest of the nation. We were um, isolated as of a couple of days ago when one of our families started developing symptoms that might be um, the coronavirus. And it's interesting. Um, we have three of our four grown up children here and um, they're all working and working for home, from home along with my wife. Now, it's challenging enough getting um, five adults in a house working harmoniously alongside each other without um, adding some of this extra dynamic. Now, no doubt there's some people out there that are in a similar situation and much worse and new, doing much better than us. But I suspect there's also others just thinking about our children when they were really small and crawling up the walls. There'll be some of you uh, who, who are struggling and our thoughts and prayers are with you. Just reflecting 
um, on our role as a church and bringing God into the equation. It occurs to me that although church is locked up and only locked up for now and for a season, God can never be locked up. You can't contain or restrain God. The sanctuary, which was the church, needs to be our homes. And for those of you who are key workers, your places of work too. God is the God of heaven and earth. He's ever present and he's with you now. Although church movements are restricted, um, we think that we can still provide some essential services. I and others might not be able to go into the building, but we are still contactable. And if you're not being looked after by the local authority, friends and neighbours, then do reach out to us and we'll do what we can. We want to ensure that everyone recognises that they're not alone. We want to offer practical support, emotional support, spiritual support. Those of you who need practical help, we'd like to be able to uh, work out ways to be able to bring it. Those of you who need emotional support, we're here to be a listening ear. And those of you who need spiritual support, we might have to operate virtually and at a distance, but there are small groups and Sunday worship to join and we'll be publishing one or two materials over the next little while for which we hope is going to be of help and encouragement to you. You and I can take great comfort from the fact that Jesus is interested in all aspects of our lives and so are we. I was reading 1 Thessalonians 5 this morning, a message from the message translation of the Bible. It talks about us being ready to play host to Jesus. Uh, we do that by his spirit and we invite him to be with us now. I invite you to invite him into your space and into your heart. But it's also a message that we need to be ready for Jesus's return. And verses 23 and 24 put it like this. May God himself, the God who makes everything holy and whole, make you holy and whole. Put you together, spirit, soul and body, and keep you fit for the coming of our master, Jesus, Jesus Christ. The one who called you is completely dependable. If he said it, he'll do it.